welcome to MBS Show, episode number 305. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. You gotta help me, Norman. They're after me. Who are? Everybody. The gerbils. Gotta look out, man. Those gerbils are gonna get ya. They're gonna get ya. <sighs> There's only one way to stop gerbils, and that's to talk about My Little Pony. I don't understand it, but it's the only way. I seen it work on a show once, where this one girl was playing the tambourine and the gerbils were hypnotized. Okay, now, now that's just silly. Hypnotizing rodents with a musical instrument? What's next? Having a bunch of swarming, uh, self-replicating little fly-like creatures be let out of an entire town by doing a one-man band? Sure. Oh, ah. I mean, the worst you could happen is a mutated rat that teaches ninjutsu to four turtles. What does anything have to do with mutants? I don't know. But anywho, in today's episode, we're gonna do the news. Uh, it's nothing much. It's kind of a slow news week. Um, season 8 is coming soon. I think, what, it's about two weeks away from now? No, three weeks away from now. So yay, that's gonna be fun and exciting. Season 8, yay. But before we head on to Season 8, we gotta do what's now. And what's now is Equestria Girls. That seems to be the hottest thing, ain't it that right? Well, sure, if you want to call them hot. I mean, that's your prerogative, Norman. And the rest of us will have something called taste. <laughs> Ah, uh, you. But anywho, with the recent um, outburst of Equestria Girl content, there is a lot of confusion on how you should watch it and what's the timeline. And well, luckily enough for us, uh, EQD has made down a full list of how we should, no, well, technically how we should watch it is a guideline of what came out. Hmm, mind if I read off the list, Norman? Sure, go ahead. All right, folks, to start off, you'll want to start off with the Equestria Girls movie, My Little Pony, Equestria Girls. The first one, where Princess Twilight goes to get back her crown from the evil Sunset Shimmer. Then we got Equestria Girls, Rainbow Rocks, where now a reformed Sunset Shimmer and the Humane Six have to team up against some very dastardly evil sirens who want to take over the school with the power of music. Oh, no. Then you have the Friendship Games, which showcases just how much... It's like, is public funding for schooling this good? Because it never was when I was in school. Yeah, you got a point there. You got a point there. Like, motocross track, track and field with archery and <laughs> obstacle course. <laughs> they would never let us have archery. They would consider that a deadly weapon. Really? Yeah. Which it is. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, after the lovely Friendship Games, you have the Legend of the Everfree, where everyone goes to camp. And nobody gets bitten by bugs. That's kind of impressive. Yeah, but you do get strangled by plants, which is kind of eerie and appealing at the same time, too. You have issues. Many, many, many issues. Okay, moving on from the straight movies, we then also have uh, the fully recently released Forgotten Friendship, which is also could be considered a full movie of itself. Where... Uh, Everyone forgets that Sunset Shimmer ever existed or was ever nice. And many people say, what's the big deal? That's a great idea. <laughs> hey, I, I, I resent that statement. Everybody likes the Shim Sham. She's pretty nice, nice. I guess. Again, if you have no taste. <laughs> Moving on from those, now we move on to the shorts, the 22 Minute Magical Movie Night specials. Where it was those three pieces of movie magic and dance magic and mirror magic, each involving uh, one involving the Humane Six creating a music video to then the Humane Six being part of a movie to then um, ignoring the Humane Six because they get disposed of in the third part pretty much halfway through. And it's more about, hey, what if Starlight Glimmer and Sunset Shimmer hung out? That'd be awesome. Yeah, let's do let's do that. It was. I like that. <laughs> Then you have all the shorts, you know, five minute, three minute shorts, everything from shake it, shake up makeup involving Applejack getting gussied up, which can be good or bad, depending on your, again, taste. A photo booth story, raise this roof, states of prep, pet project, subs rock, at the art of friendship, the Canterlot movie club, leaping off the page, epic fails, 
and so many more. Because we're not done there. We're also talking about the Better Together shorts, which are also even shorter segments. A Fine Line, School of Rock, The Queen of Clubs, Pinky Sitting, The Final Countdown, Overpowered, Star Cross, My Little Shop of Horrors, My Little Birdie Told Me, Day of Affection, and Super Squad Goals, and Fluttershy's Butterflies, Tech Support, Dropping Miss Shimmer, Best Friends Forever, Mad Twins, Monday Blues, Shake Things Up, Head of the Road, Kinky Dink World, Good Vibes, and let's not even forget the Equestria Girls Mini Shorts, which are in like three dimensionals. Yes, 3D! 3D! Peggy Pie Slumber Party featured Twilight Sparkle, Peggy Pie Slumber Party featured Rarity, another Peggy Pie Slumber Party, and we have a dance-off and a pillow fight. Adventures at Canon High with cl- Class with Principal Celestia, and also Adventures at Canon High, Sidewise Lab, and the show must go on part one and part two. Well, there's just so much Equestria Girls, we really don't know what to do with it! Well, you seem excited about them. <laughs> I guess. Uh, but in all honesty, uh, you did... Um, compile everything to one. There's the choose your own adventure stories. Those are cool, and yeah, oh, yeah. I, it's, but it's, I think my favorite probably was tech support. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, I have to say driving Miss Shimmer. That one was fun. Uh, the struggles of trying to learn how to drive. You're a horse. You drive the carriage. <laughs> Even then, you know, there's it's. I wish there was more, you know, silly humor like that. But then again, uh, you know, Shimmer's gotten used to this world-ish. True. But there's still, wait, like, wait, some wait. things I, I, that I have confused. I have it. something to nitpick for a bit here. Because, okay, we all know that Shim Sham here knows how to ride a bike, right? Yeah, that requires a lot of balance. Yeah, and how does she not know how to drive a car? Like, ain't those two... Not even mutually exclusive at all. Especially with cars, the first thing you really have to learn, Norman, is spatial relations and looking out. Your vision is shifting between what you're seeing ahead of you to what you're seeing to the side of you and behind you. you. Knowing where you are and what's around you at all times is one of the ma- first major things you have to learn when driving. So spatial awareness is just huge. Hmm. Okay. Um. I, I failed my first driver's uh, test because I wasn't looking through my uh, rear view mirror enough. Hmm, I, I guess you're right then because, well, I've been driving for so long now that I'm used to it. So probably I don't really understand how to look at, to look at it from a newer driver's point of view. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still remember what it was like. But then again, Norman drives. Okay, great. Uh, note to self, never visit Malaysia or I'll get run over. Hey, I'm a good driver, I think. <laughs> no, Norman, that's what everyone says to your face so that you don't run them over. <laughs> Next time I'm going to blast you with a big giant crow eagle thingy. <sighs> and talking about <laughs> blasting you with big giant crow eagle thingy. That was a terrible segue. There's no good way to go into this one. Death battle, that's a thing, right? I think that segue was so terrible it sent its CEO right off the edge of a cliff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> boys. Oh, uh, yes, but we got Death Battle. Uh, another one uh, that came up uh, by the lovely people at Screw Attack, and this time it featured Raven from DC Comics and Twilight Sparkle, our lovely little purple pony princess. How did it fare? Well, um, we're going to put a spoilers up here in case you haven't seen it yet. Spoiler mm-hmm. warning. So, uh, if you want to skip ahead to X amount of time, whatever time yeah. is flashing. Yeah. Whatever, whatever time I think Norman will put down. Just a uh, fair warning because we will be talking about the results and what happened in here. <clears throat> so, spoilers in three, two, one. Twilight Lost. So! <laughs> yeah, obviously. I mean, yeah. the way that the Okay, we need to break down what Death Battle is. Death Battle is a YouTube channel done by Screw Attack where they pit two fictional characters together. Uh, one of the few that they did is... I think they did... Uh, who was it again? Oh, I can name off some. Like They had uh, Ryu from Street Fighter versus Guy from Final Fight. No, no, no not, not Final Fight. Uh, Guy from... Um... Dang it. What's the other fighting game that's really popular? Uh, King of Fighters? No. Um... King of Fighters, that's it. Yes. They had, they had Terry. Terry from King of Fighters, oh, I think, yes. his name. Yes. Also, they had um, Rainbow Dash versus Starscream, which, you know, 
anyone could win against Starscream. A freaking piece of paper, moist, <laughs> could win against Starscream. Yeah. And oh, I'm looking at their list here on the wiki page. They had Rogue versus Wonder Woman. They had the Battle Toads versus the movie version of Leonardo. I don't know. They just put pictures here. But um, Battle Toads versus Leonardo from the Ninja Turtles. Yoshi versus Riptor, and so on. Like even Sonic versus Mario. But anywho, um, there's a lot of well fictional characters fighting. Like if if you are into this, go watch it because it's a lot of fun. But ponies had made an appearance three times now. And the ponies are Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and Twilight. And Rainbow Dash versus Starscream. That was an interesting fight. And the winner was Rainbow Dash. The only reason why Starscream lost because he was a loser. <laughs> he, he's born to lose. Yeah. Right? And Pinkie Pie versus Deadpool didn't have a winner except for Pinkie Pie and Deadpool. Sorry, but when you take two reality-destroying crazy people together, they're just going to find more to commiserate on. Yeah. But as for Twilight and Raven, yeah, Raven has just existed for quite a lot longer. And because of that, you know, they've always had to do the whole comic book, oh, doing something bigger and grander than last time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why Raven is OP. (laughs) Yeah, but at the same time, too... uh... The what you call this? Uh, the way that they do the show is that they try and research the characters' powers, weakness, and almost everything that they have, and put it into a nice list. Where okay, is this fair? Is this not okay? What do they have, and so on. Blah 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 blah. A good example is this one: is Superman versus Goku, part one and two, and it was pretty interesting. Uh, Goku lost twice, if I remember right. Yeah, and the second time he lost even quicker. <laughs> <laughs> but that's besides the point. So with Twilight versus Raven, they didn't go for the Pinkie Pie slash Deadpool route where nobody loses. They just win and they just have fun and stuff. No, no, no. Somebody lost and that was Twilight. And yeah, it was believable. Like from a nitpick's point of view, there is a lot to nitpick. I, I how do I put this? The tree house, um, Golden Oaks Library was supposed to be destroyed, but no, nah, they use it as a running gag because hey, it's Twilight's Re- library is going to be destroyed by Raven this time. Ah, oh. <laughs> always, always have the, uh, always have the library destroyed. Yeah, and and so on. But hey, uh, it was enjoyable. What what do you think, man? Like, did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, to be honest, the issue I have with Death Battle mostly is that the quality of the episodes, while the research and everything there is usually well done and everything, the issue I have is with who they... Because they get, like, different animators to do it. Sometimes it's 3D. Sometimes it's 2D sprites. It varies. Um, Whenever they do the 2D sprites style of animation, like they did for this one... The quality in the fight varies wildly. And while the one with Twilight and Raven was okay, it's certainly not their best. Oh, yeah. Personally, anytime they they have someone doing 3D, and it was like, uh, heck, I think they got uh, way back in 2000, like 12, uh, 10 or 12 or something, or just many years ago, that, like in some of their early episodes, when they had Monty Ohm, when he was still around, rest his soul, uh, they got him to do some uh, animations for that, and that was amazing. And I think they found another 3D animator to do that for stuff recently, like they did one for uh, Dante versus Bayonetta. Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah. So I think the issue comes down to so more the battles themselves can be kind of almost skippable at some times for me. Like, I know, the whole title thing, it's like I'd rather just see them talk about both characters compare them and it's like who would win and sometimes i've just just skipped the fights because there's a lot of action going on but there's nothing really interesting going on Mm. i don't know you can have you can have an action sequence but you can have it be completely boring like yeah yeah move on move on but again that's a taste thing and i am nowhere near as versed enough to elaborate upon why 
I find some of the fight sequences droll. But I'm sure there is someone who is way well versed can actually break down why some of their fights don't work. Yeah, and I think a few did with some of the Dragon Ball fanboys and fangirls with Goku vs. Superman. But there's one uh, fight that I really like that is kind of dumb, but it's really, really fun. And that's Chuck Norris vs. Segata Sanshiro. There's no winner in that one. They're still fighting. <laughs> I-, I think one I did like that was actually pretty funny was Dr. Wily vs. Dr. Eggman. <laughs> oh my god, what's the result? What was that one <laughs> Oh, um, so what happened was that then Dr. Eggman then brought in his ultimate weapon, Mega Metal Sonic, and then um, Dr. Wily then was like, ha, countered it with the um, the Maverick virus, <laughs> causing Mega Metal Sonic to go insane with the Ma- Maverick virus, and he killed them all <laughs> and started burning them. And to which that, to which then uh, Wiz and Boobster are like, uh, so winner is Metal Sonic? Winner is Metal Sonic! <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's a good way to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <clears throat> okay, yeah, so, um, in, in the end, in the end, it, it's just for funsies and whatnot, so it's not to be taken seriously. This is just some show to be entertaining if you don't agree then hey you don't agree life goes on yeah nothing stopping you from going out and animating your own fight true true and you want to see something happen there's nothing stopping you from doing it except for eventually that video being taken down by a dmca strike but hey there's nothing stopping you from creating it true true and the next fight is going to be awesome because it's going to be starring jotaro kujo versus kenshiro from fist of the north star so there's going to be fun so, yeah, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, that's the news for this week, guys. Sorry for a pretty slow news week. I tried finding some. Probably there are, but I don't think it would be best to put on the show. Huh? But anywho, uh, let's head into my favorite topic. Uh, what have we been doing with our week? So, Wills, it's been a while since you've been on. So, how was your week, man? Oh, week's been busy. I've been, I've been moving, I've been... Packing up stuff, and I've been playing. Uh, finally, beat the last Guardian, Ooh. which is that uh, it's the one of the Ico series, you know, I, I, or Eco, the uh, Shadow of the Colossus and the Last mm-hmm. Guardian. I have to say, it's quite a good game. I got it for uh, twenty bucks at a Walmart because it was on sale, nice. and I'd say it was definitely a good continuation. Uh, I had a lot of emotions going through it, and I think the story it told was good. And I liked the puzzling and platforming. I only had to once look up a solution on uh, on the web, and that was just because I was really I thought I was doing something wrong for the longest time. I was like, "Oh no, no, I've been doing everything. I've been doing it right. It just didn't feel like I was." Mm. <laughs> all right, all right, that's fun. Uh, did you bought the Shadow of the Colossus remake? Uh, no, I have not bought that yet because I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I don't know. I seen the let's play of it. And it's pretty short. Oh, yeah, it's very... Be- I mean, all, all it is technically is a graphical overhaul um, remake. Yeah, they, they, they added in a couple things, but not much. It, it was The game is still like 98% the original game. Which, depending on your level of fandom, can be good or bad. Personally, I would have liked it if they had, you know, added in like just some bonus colossi for like fun, you know, like just like a, a like a time trial sort of thing. Mm. But I can understand them not doing that. All right, all right. What about Metal Gear Survive? Did you <laughs> look at it? Uh, not touching it with a ten foot pole. No, <laughs> no. That and considering how little they've sold of that, they can all crash and burn for all I care. Oh wow. That bad. Oh wow. Well. I, I I personally haven't touched it or anything. I just seen Angry Joe's review of it and whoo boy, he did not like it. Who would like it? The game is designed by an absolute moron. It's not that bad, right? I mean the beta came out and people had fun with it, right? Yeah, you can it's one of those games that that's terrible when you solo it, but when you play with friends it can be somewhat tolerable. But the problem is, is that there's only one thing that has actually multiplayer, and it's a stupid horde mode. Oh. Everything else is all single player. Oh. And 
Oh, there's so many microtransactions in a single player game. Like, okay, just basically for the same price, you can get Monster Hunter World and get a lot more of a satisfying experience. Oh, wow. That is. Oof. Ten foot pull then. Yep. Yes. So, no, avoid it. Avoid it like the plague. All right. All right. Anything else? No, 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 really. Just, just the, just the move and the, and the games, man. All right. Very simple life I bought. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. And as for me, I've been well. Uh, how do I put this? Nothing much or nothing new really happened. Um, I've been playing a bit of the Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and also a bit of the Overwatch. Um, onto Dragon Ball Fighter Z, I am enjoying that game a lot. It is such fun. Like. Uh, how do I put this? Remember way back when when you played Marvel and you had the three on three system from Marvel two to Marvel three, and that was fun, flashy, and whatnot. Uh, with this one, it's kind of better because some of the characters feel like the show, and the art style is awesome too, and the flashiness and the bombastic screens of Goku doing his. Super is just awesome, and wow, it feel it really feels awesome. The game is simple to pick up, but hard to master. And I've seen tournament play of it, and I'm just thinking, how do you even do that? Like, you press the square, square, square to perform a combo, but what they're doing is not that. Like, what? It's just insane. Well, I can't really speak for fighting games, man. Uh, all I can say is, well, hey, it could be worse. It, it could be uh, dead or alive levels of hard to learn. <laughs> uh, no comment. Uh, DOA is a pretty fun game, right? I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but other than that, um, there's also the overwatch and yeah overwatch just started season eight and yeah i just finished my placement game and i did pretty well this season i'm, I'm surprised with myself like yay um feeling in four spots that needed to be filled didn't uh, go for heroes that i wanted to play and then i tried out some voice chat that seems to work not most of the time like i don't know why but in my region, voice chat people doesn't want to do it that much. So, yeah. Yeah, actually, it's more some a thing at certain ELOs as well. People will just not voice communicate. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I can't say anything much about that one. <coughs> but other than that, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, nothing much. Nothing, nothing beyond the games. Like, been pretty boring. Oh, by the way, if you guys are listening to this now, that means it's past, but... Hakon is happening soon. Or oh, it happened. And Hakon is horses at home convention? Something like that? <laughs> you heard of this, uh, Will? Sort of, yeah. I've heard of it. Um, don't know much about it. If you want to elaborate, go right ahead. The concept is for people who could not attend a convention. Uh, this is a good alternative for it because... There is a lot of personalities from the fandom who will be doing a lot of uh, events for uh, the, well, Hakon. People from Silver Quill to myself will be doing something for uh, the con. And it starts on Saturday, March 3rd, all day long. And I don't know because this is kind of late. By the time you hear this, it's ended. So yeah, too late. But other than that, I'm just looking through the whole list. And you got a lot of people. Like I mentioned before, um, Silver Quill. He did a um, panel about shipping taboos. The do's and don'ts of OTP. And over there, he has Sweetie Bloom himself, Josh Scorcher. Briny Buck, the Looney Turtle, and more. And as for me, I'll be in a panel with the uh, guys from... Uh, I don't know if they're a group or not, but they have a variety game show called uh, The Bronies House. Uh, this involves 
uh, Lucky Knight, Midnight Scribe, Gabriel Jones, Cinnamon Aurora, and myself. <coughs> and hmm. by look, I, I don't know if it's good or not because I'm still in the past while you guys are listening would have already noticed it or something like that because I don't know how to do this, Will. I'm, I am so confused. <laughs> But overall, overall, uh, I hope this is going to be fun because my thing starts at 6 p.m. Eastern. So, yay me! I am going to be dead tired. And one thing that I forgot to mention here is that we all had to draw Brayburns. You know Brayburn, right? Wait, wait. You had to... Okay, you had to draw Brayburn the pony? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, so we all had to draw him. And well, um, here's my thing. Uh, why don't you take a look? See, <laughs> what do you think, man? It's a lot better than mine because <laughs> I haven't drawn anything. <laughs> oh, wow. But no, it's good, man. It's good, mate. MS Paint. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not even trying. Well, I tried. I tried. <laughs> <clears throat> hey man, everyone start. Everyone starts somewhere. I mean, gosh dang. Yeah, true that, true that. So uh, that's something. Like if it's up, I'll probably link it in the show notes or something. If not, uh, stay tuned for next week where I linked it or something like that. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. But hey, um, that's the news for this week. So, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the NBA show at gmail dot com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. My personal account is at Norman Sanzo. And Wills, where can the good people find you? Well, if you want to find uh, my art, you can find me on DeviantArt. If you want to find out uh, stuff I stupidly retweet, you can find me on Twitter, and everything's under Willizen, W-I-L-I-Z-I-N. Alrighty then, alrighty then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on BonivaLive.com. Links are in the show notes. And also do check out our new thing that we're doing, the MBH Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there you get me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, and Guests of the Week, reviewing the pony episodes comics movies and many more hey it's really fun like sometimes we do miraculous ladybug that's something we like to do but there's one thing i want to do and that is review the princess bride Mm. i don't know man we should probably avoid that why well do you really want to do you really want to bet against a sicilian when death is on the line (laughs) why not right it'll be fun (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, I, I need to rewatch it to get more of the jokes. <laughs> uh, but anywho, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and coffee.com. If you have your support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Uh, talking about the thank yous, i like to thank Lurker Cat, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, Mark... Charles, Lucky Knight, and Tristan. Thank you guys. You all have been really, really awesome fellas. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Willison. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Toodaloo.